I can't believe we got Tom Arroyo from uh, Slayer to do our. No, we did not. That? There's no way we can afford that guy. Tyler. We no, we couldn't. He was Tyler, just like, you guys are awesome. Every single week, we go to Mayhem Comics in I Des Moines. Do. Well, you do. Yes, shut up. Just play along with <laughs> the story. Yeah. No, we do. They hook us up with a brand new comic every week. We mm-hmm. don't have any say. They pick it out for us. No, we don't want a say. Like, we want to, you know what I mean? Because we, I'm yeah, Marvel, yes. you're DC. Prop, proper, proper verbiage. And yeah. so, basically, this is our way of being able to check out um, independent books that we might not um, pick out ourselves. Um, and that encourage are, you That to- are hot sellers. And or that... Um, that would broaden our horizons a little I bit. I wasn't going for a cheers there, but oh. I was just going to say, uh, yeah, to encourage, you know, supporting the not only the indie publishers, but also your uh, local comic shops. Go so to your check local out. comic book shop, man. Do you know how much Specifically, cool stuff there is? Mayhem Comics in Des Moines. And Ames. Yes. I, actually, I think uh, it's in Clive, but Des Moines is fine. Look up Mayhem in Des Moines. It says Des Moines on the website. So it's it's fine. fine. Anyway, what is the comic this week, Tyler? This week is Star Trek Defiant by IDW. Um, IDW is probably like the third or fourth biggest publisher right now, honestly. Um, yeah, after definitely. Image and uh, you know Marvel DC, definitely Image. Doing better than Boom. <laughs> oh, I'm taking Boom Studios. It's probably right now. It's probably Marvel DC, Image, uh, Dark Horse, and then IDW. In fact, IDW might be even like three or four because they got a lot of fucking books on the market, um, and they're all. Um, uh, a see, lot of they them lost are, the Transformers license. They did, which is fine because I'm willing to bet Marvel will. Do, I never read any of that shit. Um, <laughs> some good. Shit I've heard there. it was really good. Yeah. Um, so we got Star Trek to fight number one, and what it is is it has it's a Worf story, and it's about um, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Star Trek is very dense mythologically, and I know uh, has a very dense mythology, and I know um, especially like the later. Next generation stuff. TNG. Yeah. And um I I did watch most of those. And Star Wars, I'm sure somebody could say that about Star Wars too. Um, but for whatever reason, uh when I was growing up, I tended to be more Marvel DC and more Star Wars than Star Trek. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I, I never really was interested in Star Trek growing up. I you know, like the original series, um, I can't really watch an episode of the original series because it's like an hour long. <laughs> it is. And unless you're really into Star Trek, yeah. it's kind of fucking boring. It is kind of weird because of all the things like y- you think about when you watch movies or TV shows with your parents and you see how like formative that thing and usually what your parents like you like, um, my dad like watched when he was growing up. He he watched the original series, but mm. we never like watched Next Generation or Deep Space. Nine. Like we didn't watch any of that. Well, see, because I don't think he was that into it, and I think that's probably why I haven't been into like really haven't been in Star Trek. So let me let me put nothing you guys, against Star Trek. By let me put you guys into a scene here. Let me put you guys into a time. It's the time is nineteen eighty six. It's three years removed from uh, Return of the Jedi. Um, You uh, have probably had Temple of Doom, but, you know, uh, Last Crusade is probably a couple years off in the the, uh, rear view. And you're expecting a a third Indiana Jones anyway. But most of this, most of the properties that you know are, are, are just kind of, kind of gone. And there's no real, you know, y- 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 shit, you're never going to get another Star Wars movie. Are you kidding me? And Star Trek, well, the original cast is getting older and stuff, you know. And I mean, sure, they're doing movies, but. Only the, isn't it only the odd numbers are the good ones? The point is, <laughs> is that at that point, right now, it's a thing that all the IPs you loved as kids are coming back. Oh, they it's cyclical. They always come back. Right, but. How in, many versions have there 19, been in TNT? 19, in 1986, the next generation was the only thing of yeah. all the IPs that we liked that was like, oh, shit. A continuation, an yeah, yeah. Right. We, you know, we're 10 years away from the sequel trilogy, all that. Um, so that's why I watched the next generation, because it was a way to get you know, a weekly way to get into that, you know, and, and to and to keep that science fiction, that love for science fiction. And I did like it when I first watched it, but again, it's just really, really dense. And one of the things, it's not a bad book, but one of the things I talked to you about is, for some reason, Star Wars and Star Trek uh, comic books, when they were first being made, the editors of the Star Trek comic book were adamant that all of the artists have to draw the characters like the actors who play them. So on the cover, that's Michael Dorn. 
that's Leonard Nimoy. That's Brent Spiner. That's yeah. whoever the chick was in, in uh, I think, um, Deep Space Nine. Yeah. But it makes the art weird, doesn't it? You felt you felt that way same way, right? D- d- well, for you, in I, Star Wars, they don't make that much of an effort. Well, and it, it helps I with think, the art. Well, I think it's because you're coming from this. It's coming from the TV medium, right? And you're coming from that. So when you're reading the comic, you're reading it. You're almost reading it like a TV show. Sure. Because I don't know about you, but when I was reading it, I heard Le- Leonard Nimoy's voice. Of course. You know, I, I you know I heard Worf's actor's voice, so I can't think of you probably know it. I don't. Michael Dorn. Uh, I said it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's Mike, Michael Dorn. Yeah, I'm hearing that voice. Yeah, yeah, of course. And this is also someone that who has like a passing knowledge of TNG. Like again, I never really watched it, but I know who they are. I know. Like, did you ever I see First much. Contact? One of the better Star Trek movies. No, it's actually really no, good. No, I saw the best one, Nemesis. <laughs> again, never seen that movie, but I know people fucking hate that movie. I I <laughs> think I tried to watch it, but again, it's so dense with the TNG mythology that yeah. I can't get into it. And. I think that is to the detriment of this book because Star Trek Defiant, again with you, I honestly think was well written. I think it. I, I and the art's not bad. It's just again the, the, the that bugs me about the. But the, it doesn't. The, it's not there's bad. certain things that are done in the story that I'm like again. If I was like a big TNG fan, this would probably impact me more. Again, I'm not taken away from the book in any way. And, I, yeah, I just, I'm probably more. I a, I was yeah. thoroughly entertained with it. I thought. Again, someone who is coming in as cold as an icicle with star, our Star Trek knowledge. Right, yeah. For me to come in and kind of... I, it, I, I mean, they're talking about, like, the first Klingon Emperor. I'm like, dude, I don't fucking know, like, what? But I also think they did a well enough <laughs> job that I could kind of navigate it. And, there's, and, a, and there's a couple things of exposition right at the beginning of the book, and then there's two, like, uh, Captain's Logs pages. I love that, by the way. That is perfect because it does allow you to get more into the story. And I think it's also very, uh, you could probably say no to this, but it, I feel like that's more of like a Star Trek thing to have something like that. Yeah. Like this yeah, big I think piece so of too. text to yeah. be like, here's the expedition. Um, honestly, it's, 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 in it's universe, a comic so book thing nowadays. Like Marvel books do it a lot where they just take a page and it's like, especially the X Men books. Um, they'll take a page and it'll be like a, a, an excerpt it's from always the front Emma page. Frost's diary. No, not always. It's like, you know, sometimes. Yeah, but, oh yeah, sometimes it's in, in universe. Yeah, 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 especially since Aaron, uh, Jason Aaron took over. But uh, no, uh, who's been doing X-Men? Hickman? Yes, since Hickman took over. Aaron is about to finish up the Avengers. Dugan's doing so it now, I in think. Terms of, um, in terms of a a a straight up just objecti- uh, objecti- uh, uh, objectified... Um, just out, just the book review. Itself. It's a good book, yeah. but just not being as big into Star Trek as as I am, and probably you are either. It, it, it's probably not something I would buy. But if you are into Star Trek and he, and you watch like the whole TNG and and you're really into that, um, you know, if you're watching what is the new uh, Picard? No, that's uh, 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 hey man, Strange you, New Worlds if, or or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're on Paramount Plus, but they're kind of continuations and they're kind of like. Offshoots, different I, timelines. I think you'd be but better off. I was just gonna say, uh, mm-hmm. Picard. I know you're very upset. Everybody hated season two. Everybody hated season one. I think uh, season, season three looks th- fucking. Cool, everybody though. says that season, like based on like the the Star Trek people that I've heard from, is like season three is gonna be kick ass. <laughs> it's it's like a a proper send off to the TNG characters. Yes. Which for you, I'm sure, is exciting. So I was gonna say you might want to check that out. And just, if you're watching, if Picard you're watching Picard, mm-hmm. the Star Trek Defiant, probably a great companion piece. Just something yeah. to have there with those characters. Um, yeah, if you like Star Trek, um, yeah. it's definitely a book for you. Um, it, we're just not as huge. But I love Star Trek. I love sci-fi so much yeah. that I was still enjoyed it. I still had fun with it. Yeah, and, and I think absolutely. it does a great job of still having uh, more like. Uh, pulpy sci-fi elements to it so yep. again someone like me who doesn't have a ton of knowledge of it mm. can navigate the story and understand what's going on because right. it's a pretty simple story yeah but as we know with like star trek shit it's never that simple or in star wars <laughs> yeah oh yeah in star wars. uh yeah. so overall um i i like your assessment if you if if you like star trek especially tng you're really gonna love this yeah i think so uh if you're not you probably if you're not into Star Trek, you're probably not going to read Star Trek to find anyway. Probably that's just that's just the case. But anyway, 
Another great episode, as, as you notice, we've been uh, putting these up on our YouTube. So let's you can let's let's uh, let, and let me do well. let me do let me go do you one better. If you're walking along and you're looking at the the wall of new comics and you don't see any that you like from your regular whatever, you son of a bitch! I knew you were gonna do and it. And you see this Star Trek Defiant, and and you haven't seen anything else, dude. Check it out, man. You it's a good it's well written and the art is good, and uh, you know. There's a lot of they do a lot of Star Trek books. So I'm just saying, you son of a bitch, because I knew you were going to talk about the Avengers. No, I ca- I can't. I already talked to you about it. Oh, you don't want me to. You can't if you want. I'm just saying I need to end this segment. Let's end it. Okay. Is it weird that every time I hear that, like, I feel like I have to take a shit? Like. Oh, baby, love job here! With Jake and Tyler!